Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new Roblox Souls RNG tutorial video and today we are starting a brand new series that I'm gonna call the Advanced Aura Creation Series and in here I'll be showing you guys advanced stuff to create auras of all kinds as complex as you want and as cool as you want so today I'll be showing you guys how to add extensions to your characters like wings or in the case of this video a propeller so we are going to start off by adding a rig to the workspace and one thing we will do is fix a Roblox glitch which we will do by going into the rig, opening the directory up and changing the primary part of the model to humanoid boot part. This video will have me doing a few things that I will not explain and to know how they work I suggest to watch my first few videos on how to create auras, however this guide will mostly be easy to follow even if you haven't watched those videos. However, it's still recommended. Now to explain what a Moto 6D joint is, it is something that connects the body parts of your rig. Not just your rig, but also your character. As I'm going to show here, there's going to be a few Moto 6D objects already inside of your rig that you added. aka left hip, left shoulder, neck, right hip, and right shoulder, which all connect to their individual body parts. This is the object that creators use in order to make custom rigs. If you've ever played Roblox games where you are not the default character, you most likely saw a rig that was made using custom Motor 6D attachments. And look, you might be thinking, isn't this just a wealth constraint but more complicated? And to that I answer, no. It's something different because it also allows for the body parts attached to be animated. Now let's get started on the custom body part that we want to add. In this case, I'll be using a regular part, but keep in mind that you can use any sort of part, including mesh parts and unions. As I said earlier, I want to make a propeller, so I'll just scale this so it can fit onto my character's back as if it was a propeller. Once we finish with that, we'll actually have a few adjustments to make to the part to make sure that it doesn't ruin the rig as it was before. And for that, we have to go into the properties, make sure that can collide is ticked off, that anchored is also ticked off. That our custom physical properties are set to zero. And finally, that massless is on. Once we've done all of that, our part is officially ready to be used inside of our rig. In order for us to do that, we need to attach this to the torso because every other body part is attached to the torso as well. And of course, the main focus of the video is Motor 6D attachments, so we'll just add one under torso and we'll name it accordingly. Then what we'll do is we'll set the part 0 of the attachment to torso and the part 1 of the attachment to the part that we just created. One thing I forgot to mention is you also have to drag this part inside of the rig model. Now that that's done, we can actually adjust the position of the propeller on our character. If you do this before you add the Motor 6D attachment, the position will reset and all your work will be gone. All I'm doing in properties here right now is just adjusting the position. I've had a few comments mention that I don't say what I do in properties, but is almost always related to what I say out loud, and I almost never miss a thing. As you can see here, the part is now fully attached to the rig, and whatever we do with the rig itself is just going to bring the part along with it. One more thing, you can also just use the regular move tool on the part if you want to adjust the position without going into properties. Now all we'll do here is go into the avatar animator right here and we'll select our rig and make a brand new animation so we can actually make the propeller move. Now to get started we'll just add all keyframes by clicking the plus next to rig. As I said earlier I've already made a video about animating rigs so I suggest you go watch the part 4 of the first tutorial series in order to understand how this all works. However, I won't be doing anything too complicated here, just adding some basic keyframes and working on the timeline. Here I've set up a 30 frame per second and 60 frame long animation. 
And now we can actually get started on rotating the propeller. So to actually add a keyframe, you can just rotate the part any way you want, and it will automatically add one. Now all that's left to do is to add the rest of the keyframes in the exact same way, and by moving the cursor on the timeline to the position where you want it to happen. Here I'm just going to be setting keyframes in quarter increments, so that after four different sets, we're going to have a full rotation. Here I made a small mistake, do not make the keyframe that's last before you make the ones before it, because you can end up putting duplicates or just making the keyframe wrong altogether, like I did here. All I'll do here to correct this is just delete the last two sets of keyframes and change the rotations again. I'll speed this up a little bit because I took a little bit of time to do this. Now to correct this, all I did was just continue the process of adding the keyframes gradually, without skipping to the end. And now here I test them, and it seems to work, so I'm satisfied. To change the speed of the animation, you could either extend the keyframes outwards and extend the length of the timeline, or if you want to make it faster, you could squish the frames in by just dragging on the little blue thing at the bottom there. Now I'll just drag this and adjust this till I'm satisfied with the speed of the animation. Once I'm done with this process, the animation is officially done, and you can set the loop by clicking the button that I just clicked and seeing how it works while it's being looped. If you are satisfied with the final version of the animation, you can go ahead and just export it. Don't mind what I just did here, it's just me dragging the window in the wrong way. To actually do the export, you'll just go to the three dots right next to the title of the animation and click Publish to Roblox. Here, you can adjust whatever you want, name it as you want, add a description, and all you do after that is just click Save and make sure to click Copy ID right there. Now our part is finally finished, the animation for it is finished as well, and to get it working or to test it out, there will be two different ways that I'll show here. The first is just to test it directly on the rig, and that's just by adding a script to the humanoid of the rig, and add the code that makes it work. So let's do that right now. We'll just go to the explorer, click on the rig, humanoid, and add a brand new script, that will serve as what makes the rig move. So here I pasted some code from a past video that I'll leave in the description as a paste bin. One thing I forgot to do here that you should not forget to do as well is to actually change the animation ID, which is going to be right here. This should be the animation ID that we copied while making our animation earlier. And now that we load it in, we can see the animation works perfectly. We also can't collide with the propeller itself, because it's can't collide false, and that's how it should be. Now for the second method, to actually test this on your character, you will do something similar. First, you'll delete the script away, and you'll rename the rig to Starter Character, which we will leave inside of Starter Player. Make sure it's named exactly like this, else this will not work at all. Now, the next step will be to add a brand new script, although this time it is going to be inside of starter character scripts right here. Make sure it is a regular script, but it is set to run context client. The script here will be slightly different from the other one, which I will also leave in the description, as it has another line making sure that the part above is a model before it starts running the script, because we have to make sure that it's parented under the player before we run the animation. We will also have a line that's going to set the animation priority to action 4, which is the highest priority and will make sure it overrides any other conflicting animation. We will replace the ID the same way that we did it in the other script, and once that's done, we are officially ready to test. Once you've done all of this, you can just click play and watch the magic happen. 
Anyways, that will conclude today's video. This thing might be very simple, but it will serve for a lot of uses. And this is just part 1 of the advanced creation series, and trust me, I have a lot of better stuff planned. So stay tuned, and I'm going to see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.